welcome everyone. Families, loved ones, and friends, I present to you the 2018-2019 UC Berkeley Letters in Science Data Science graduating class. Welcome to our students. Welcome to our faculty, our campus leadership, our honored guests, and our extraordinary staff. I am Katherine Carson, faculty lead of the Data Science Education Program. Some of our graduates know me as a historian. In fact, I've taught some of you, many of you, about the human stories of data, its social and human contexts and ethics. And as a historian, it is a thrill to see our paths converging on this special day. Our paths and our stories. Because in coming together today, we are weaving a new story in which we are all authors, whose outcome we have the power and the responsibility to define. Our graduates, first of all. Your stories have followed many through lines. They've drawn you into data science from many backgrounds, many orientations, many sets of families and friends. If we judge by your domain emphases, the areas each of you chose as a real world specialization for your studies, you are excited about evolution and biodiversity, economics, physical sciences, robotics, organizations and the economy, social policy and law, sustainable development and engineering, linguistic science, cognition, business and industrial analytics. And that's less than half of the domain emphases you've chosen. You've merged that inbound curiosity with your technical courses. After the sheer excitement of Data 8, the foundations of data science, You've used your personal interest to motivate you to gain a strong grounding in probability, data structures, algorithms, inference. Or you've taken pleasure in those topics for their very own sake as you've come to appreciate their beauty and depth. And you've woven together your own identities, positionalities, and personal values with the ethical and societal choices of this datafied world you are helping to build. All of this brings you together as a distinctively Berkeley class of data science graduates to be. And then you didn't just take data science courses. You helped create them and teach them. You have already woven your stories into each other's and ours. When we asked you about your experience in the major, you told us about service. I'll read a few. I started working, one graduate said, for the division of data science before it was even officially the division. When I realized that I would be able to complete the major requirements in time to graduate, it was very exciting. Another, my favorite experience in data science was becoming a UGSI. That's an undergraduate teaching assistant. For my favorite course, Data 8. Having the opportunity to give back to the class that has given me so much has been incredible. I love being part of students' first exposure to data science and seeing them learn and gain interest in the field as a whole as I had experienced myself. Another graduate writes, my most memorable experience was when I was accepted to be a peer advisor. I was excited and honored to be one of the first peer advisors for a new major. And then another, I am honored to be part of Berkeley's Division of Data Science internal external operations team who built out DataX online and help uplift Berkeley's data science program to become available not only to Berkeley students, but to students and schools around the Bay Area and in other parts of the country. And some of our graduate stories acknowledge the, well, just slightly crazy character of this new program. I quote, 
I enjoyed trying to guess what the expected data science curriculum would be. <laughs> so there's a story here, too. A story of weaving a program together with the dedicated faculty and staff who are witnessing your commencement today. A number of us up here at front have been on this path for five years. That was when the design team for this major was launched. It has become integral to our life stories as well as yours. And across the board, Berkeley's faculty have invested incredible creativity, amazing vision, and shall I say, unsurpassed fortitude and determination in creating and teaching the classes and programs you have passed through. They are, we are, so thrilled to have the chance to be here with you. And I don't think there's been any major that's been served by more pathbreaking and dedicated staff. The intrepid advisors who counseled you, the inventive coordinators who built programs around you, the amazing technical team who created and managed the infrastructures you used. I want, on behalf of the faculty, to give special acknowledgement to three staff members who have so completely interwoven their own stories with today's commencement. To Anthony Swen, who as our very first data science employee has helped lead through the wilderness and truly done a piece of just about everything. When asked if something's possible, he always says, we'll make it work, even when he should say no. <laughs> then to Carlin Shannon, who has a title called executive assistant to the dean, which really means she who runs everything with extraordinary competence behind the scenes. And to Marjorie Enser, who as a deeply experienced advisor has expertly designed and fluidly orchestrated today's commencement. What an accomplishment. Thank you, Marjorie, and all of the team. And lastly, the story we're authoring here together draws in all of you, whether on the stage or in the auditorium seats. You have helped make this day possible in a way that may be obvious, Chancellor Christ, Provost Alavisados, Kate Johnson, or hidden, possibly known only to you. We are so grateful that each of you has contributed your story to this first chapter of the Division of Data Sciences at Berkeley, and we look forward to authoring the next one with you. So that is our welcome and our thanks. It is time for the ceremony. I have the pleasure of introducing our Dean, David Culler. What a pleasure. Chancellor Christ, Kate Johnson, Provost Olivasados, Dean Jacobson, faculty, family, friends, thank you for joining us on this most exciting day. I know you all join me in being just so proud of the first ever Berkeley graduating class of data science. In fact, seeing that pride well up throughout this auditorium, all of you, why don't we let these graduates know just how proud of them we are? And why are we so proud? It's not just that you've worked long and hard with creativity and thoughtfulness through a rigorous program of study to achieve this degree, although that's all true. It's also because you are so brave. You could have chosen a well-trodden path and pursued a degree that's well-established with a long history behind it and a clear journey ahead, be that into particular jobs, particular fields of graduate study, and yes, Many of you did that too, <laughs> but you have all chosen to break a new trail, one that no high school counselor would have recommended to you four years ago, one that you probably never talked about with your friends and family before you arrived at Berkeley. You came to college 
and truly met with discovery. Many of you tell me stories about the major, how it just seems to be made for you. It was. You are explorers on your own expedition, and this is but one step. And what is so amazing about this expedition is it can lead absolutely anywhere. How did you become so courageous? Part of the answer is right behind you. In fact, graduates, why don't you stand up, turn around, and let them know just how thankful you are. So what does one say to brave explorers heading off on an expedition? Perhaps the words of Thomas Jefferson in 1803 when he sent Meriwether Lewis and William Clark off to find a water passage from the Missouri to the Pacific Ocean will do. Yes, there was a little problem with that project spec, like the Rocky Mountains in between. <clears throat> they weren't just to chart the course and ca they were also, to catalog all the plants and animals and minerals along the way, learn the languages and cultures of the peoples, identify diseases and their remedies, <clears throat> and find a handy ship back home. Sounds like a list of our domain emphases, doesn't it? <clears throat> but in addition, he gave them guidance. He said about the people you meet, quote, treat them in the most friendly and conciliatory manner. Ally all jealousies as to the object of your journey. Satisfy them as to its innocence and confer with them on the po points most convenient as at mutual emporiums and articles of the most desirable interchange. And of course, they would not have made it anywhere without the support of the numerous Ameri Native American nations they met along the way. So unless you think you are the first data science explorer, explorers, um, consider Jefferson's further guidance. Your observations are to be taken with great pains and accuracy to be entered distinctly and intelligibly for others as well as yourself to comprehend. And with the aid of the usual tables, fix the latitude and longitude of the places with which they were taken. Geocode them. No geojason yet. Several copies of these, as well as your other notes, should be made at your leisure times and put in the care of your most trusty attendants, a good team, hard to find, to guard them um, by multiplying them against accidental losses to which they'll be exposed. And he points out, a further guard would be that one of these copies be written on the paper of the birch as it is less liable to injury from damp that, than common paper. So whether it is birch bark, notebooks, that would be the Jupiter kind, or elegant computational narratives and visualizations, take the tools you've learned, look carefully all around and go make a positive difference in the world in your own unique way. Congratulations. <laughs> and with that, Professor John De Niro will introduce our faculty speaker. And I'm quite sure John De Niro needs no introduction. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce today's faculty speaker uh, on this unique and wonderful event. Um, Professor Ani Adhikari actually earned her PhD in statistics right here at Cal. After a brief exile at Stanford, she did return to Cal <laughs> um, and has been delighting her colleagues and her students ever since. Uh, but she's one of my personal heroes, and I wanted to share a little bit why before I give her the microphone. Um, 
Before you all knew her, she invested a ton of energy into STAT2, two, Statistics 2, Introduction to Statistics. Uh, and no computers, no PowerPoint. She would just grab chalk and teach students how to make precise and proper statistical arguments without too much jargon or equations or formulas. And it was a great course. She won the Distinguished Teaching Award, which is Berkeley's highest honor for teaching. She created an online course that I think tens or hundreds of thousands of students took. I mean, she made her mark on the world. She did it. But now we know that she was just getting started because she and a group of faculty here, many of whom are in attendance today, had a vision for a new kind of course, a way of teaching students to make proper and precise statistical arguments, but with computation and computer-generated data visualization as a central part of the story. And so, having crafted STAT2 into perhaps the best statistics course on the planet, Professor Ani Adhikari signed up to replace it as the first instructor of Data8. So Data8, Foundations of Data Science, was a new course that was built as a collaboration. Many of us worked on it. But someone had to actually stand up in front of the students on that first semester and deliver all the lectures, take the reins. And that was Professor Adhikari. And I think some of you actually were in that very first course. Um, she didn't stop there. In the last few years, she's created, created two other probability courses that uh, follow in the same vein of using computation to help students master reasoning about uncertainty and impartial information. She's been up here in front of students on the Wheeler stage. She's been behind the scenes helping craft the structure of the major. Uh, it seems the students have noticed that uh, she's been making a lot of contributions because this year in the yearly poll of the Daily Cal, she was named the best professor on campus. Not bad. So here we are at an event that probably wouldn't have existed if it weren't for all of her efforts and brilliance. Did I use the word probability there okay? okay. Uh, and, uh, and anyway, and we, and we, we, we get to hear from her one last time, which is really wonderful. So please uh, join me in welcoming Professor Ani Adhikari. You know, I'm only following in Professor De Niro's footsteps. Last year, it was he who was voted the best professor on campus. <laughs> Thank you, Professors uh, Carson and Culler, for giving me the honor of speaking today. In future years, many students will graduate with data science degrees at Berkeley and elsewhere but there will be none like this group. And I am profoundly grateful for the opportunity to address them. Because these are the students who took a chance on us. On our new courses, on a funny looking professor with a funny name, <laughs> and on the new major. Guys, thank you. I had the privilege of giving the very first lectures in Data 8, and last night I went back and I dug up my old rosters from that first year, 2015, 2016, and I shut my eyes and I could see all the faces. And now my eyes are wide open and I see all the faces. <laughs> so many of you who are seated before us today were on those lists. You who in your freshman year trusted your instincts, and enrolled in a course brand new, solely on the strength of the course description, because nothing like it existed anywhere else in the world. On behalf of the faculty, I want you to know that this program went from non-existent to fully-fledged major in just four years, because we were inspired by your curiosity 
and your courage, not to mention your sheer dogged persistence in never letting us forget that you wished to graduate with this major, so would we please get a move on? <laughs> But you knew we couldn't do it without help. Or maybe you just decided that if you wanted something done around here, we, you were going to have to do it yourself. Whatever the reason, you rolled up your sleeves and you partnered with us in making this happen. You taught labs, you taught sections, you held office hours, you built infrastructure, you advised your fellow students, you helped faculty create new course materials. You helped faculty create entire courses. You helped create the very program of which you are today the first graduates. In doing so, you transformed education. And no, that is not an exaggeration. You know me. You know that I do not exaggerate. You helped create an academic program that has become a model for universities around the world. But more importantly, here is something that you may not know. I believe you have transformed forever the relation between faculty and undergraduate students. For as long as I can remember, that relation was one of teacher and student, the person at the podium and the person there. But you have been so much more than our students. You have been our co-workers, our collaborators. You have been our colleagues. Your maturity, sense of responsibility, dedication, and creativity have been a revelation to faculty. The impact of our collaborative work and the richness of the experience for the faculty, and I hope also for you, are sure signs that this change is irreversible. Never again will we, the faculty, think of undergraduates only as students. They will always be our valued teammates. This is the single biggest change to undergraduate education that I have seen in my time as teacher and it is you who made it happen. Now, when it comes to data science education, it has been apparent for a while that what Berkeley does today, other universities do next year. So, soon enough, the same change will come about at campuses across the country. Faculty will collaborate with undergraduates as well as teach them. Now, when I was young, disruptive students had to go stand in the corner until they got back with the program. But these days, disruption is a badge of honor. So wear it with pride, because you have disrupted undergraduate education. And now, as you prepare to leave Berkeley, I have three requests. First, never lose that spirit that you have that makes wonderful new things happen. The world is changing at a bewildering pace. Five years from now, people, you, will have jobs that we can't even imagine today. People will need skills that haven't been invented yet. That is why the world needs leaders like you. You could have chosen to take a well-known and thoroughly established class, but instead, you chose to forge a new path and take data eight. You are nimble in mind and in action. You know how to jump in and learn new skills. You can spot interesting new avenues, and you are not afraid to explore them. The world needs you. Second, I hope that you will keep listening just as you do now, deeply and thoughtfully, to others who are not exactly like you, who do not share the same views. 
You could have chosen a major in which the student body is rather homogeneous, but instead, you chose data science, where your fellow students have myriad different backgrounds, perspectives, and goals. You have acquired skills in several different domains, not just one or two. You didn't just listen to what you were already comfortable hearing and shut out all else. Instead, you work together in teams of people with complementary skills. Because of you, data science at Berkeley is not just a major, it is a community. The world needs leaders like you, who actively seek out diverse viewpoints, who understand nuance and uncertainty, who consider the human consequences of their decisions beyond their own immediate circle, the world needs you. Finally, respect the data. <laughs> you could have chosen any other major, but instead you majored in data science. In so doing, you took a public position the name of your major, data science, is your proclamation that you believe in reasoning based on evidence. You will even have a degree in it, which is more than the rest of us can say. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, how the world needs you. In this era of alternative facts and casual disregard for evidence if it contradicts opinion, you, the data scientist, are the ultimate superhero. Your superpower is integrity. Protect the world from selective and biased appeals to data and all such 21st century spin doctoring that masquerades as data analysis. Use what you have learned over the past four years to make all of your analyses open, well-founded, and transparent. Let the data tell their own story, and please, Bring back the age of reason. The world needs you. So, go for it. Grab the future with both hands. The faculty can't wait for you to do that, because we know that then the future will be in the best possible hands. Thank you in advance for the wonders that you are about to perform. And on behalf of all my colleagues on the faculty, thank you for the past few years. Congratulations on your extraordinary achievements, and best of luck for the future. Thank you, Professor Adikari, for a wonderful, wonderful speech. So I'm Bing Yu from Statistics Department. I'm honored to present your undergraduate speaker, Kyle Nguyen. <laughs> Kyle is an expansionary member of the graduating class. Like all of you, he set his sights on the data science major well before it became official. In 19, now 19, see I'm old. <laughs> in 2015, when he first started working with the student team in what became the future division of data sciences, he has ever since become a core member of the community and as a student lead, he has been hugely influential. He used his excellent organizational skills to distill effective systems and shape the processes for recruiting and mentoring students to maximize the opportunity to learn and grow. 
We miss you, Kyle. Your capable leadership and possible energy, and we look forward to hearing your experiences as a data scientist and as a leader in the real world. Kyle. Well, it looks like it's the end of the road for us here at Berkeley, at least for the time being. As we walk away from Berkeley today, we can stand tall, proud that we're trailblazers in the realm of data science. As one of the first data science programs in the world, we're setting an example for others to follow. It took a lot of courage from everyone to want to join and become a part of this data science movement. I know a lot of us sitting here today wanted to become a part of the program even before we even knew which classes to take. What makes this program so great to me is how our community made a place for everyone. Regardless of your background, what you originally planned on studying, and even what you wanted to do with data science afterward, this program's ultimate goal was to make sure that everyone belonged. And for such a young program, that's quite the accomplishment. I found this to be really true for myself, as my four years at Berkeley has been very much defined and shaped by my experience being a part of this program. Like many others, the intro, uh, intro class Data 8 was my first foray into data science. This was during fall 15, the first semester for many of us here, back when everything was still hypothetical. The major and all the subsequent classes and programs were all just a part of the ambition. Honestly, I didn't really know what data science was. And around the time, it was a pretty common phrase that started to get thrown around more, but what did it actually mean? In Data 8, Professor Ani Adkari taught us that data science was anything that we wanted to make it to be. We were given many examples about how data science could be used to explain the world around us. Uh, my very first assignment in lab was figuring out who was the best basketball player, and this was back in 2015. The data showed us Steph Curry. Four years later, uh, they're about to make the finals again, and they're probably gonna get like a fourth championship, so data science is right here. Uh, so it quickly became clear that there was no limit to the ways we could apply data science to the world. And that's why it felt like a comfortable place for so many backgrounds to congregate. The diversity was absolutely incredible to me, and we were given the opportunity to define data science for ourselves. I loved my experience in Data 8, and I was really inspired by the faculty and their grand visions for more classes, a major, and a department. So naturally, as an ambitious freshman, I wanted a piece of that. So when there was a call on our Piazza student forum for students interested in working with the program, I jumped at the chance. Great. I was going to shoot my shot and see where I would fit. And I remember in my very first meeting with our director, Anthony Swin, I just wrapped up my first semester, confident I had the skills to tackle whatever came at me. But sitting across from Anthony in that room in the Berkeley Institute for Data Science, I was getting pretty nervous. I remember reciting the methods of bootstrapping, hypothesis testing, and coming up with examples of data science projects that I worked on. I was in full-fledged interview mode, ready to be completely good about data science in this interview with someone so important to the program. But Anthony didn't ask me about any, any of that. Instead, he asked me about my ambitions. He asked me what I really cared about, and that stuck with me. That was a really big sign for things to come. Throughout the years, I was able to grow a lot, eventually to become a student leader here. My proudest accomplishment working here is helping Anthony to greatly expand our research program. And in the end, that helped hundreds of aspiring data science students find an outlet for their interests. And I can only attribute this personal growth and the ability to do these things from the program's core ethos of being student-centric willing to believe in their students and being unafraid to help them develop. A program for students where a lot of the components were built by fellow students. And I'm proud to say that many people in the Berkeley community, major or not, were able to grow individually so much as a result of the efforts of everyone here. In the final stages of my involvement, I was helping Anthony to coordinate the division student teams as a project manager. And I was incredibly humbled that my path took me here, thank you. Uh, that was the semester when the major was officially announced, and that was when reality really hit me. All of our efforts successfully came together, and my personal data science journey at Berkeley came full circle. 
Looking back, it's incredible to me that a program at this scale will put so much faith into its students, but this ended up being an important part of our eventual success. This is why I never hesitate to call the Division of Data Science a home for me here at Berkeley. In this home, I've met so many great people here that I'm proud to call my friends, learned so much in the classes, research, and most importantly, from other shared diverse experiences, and I hope you all have as well. Now that I'm minutes away from getting my data science degree, I can finally say that I have a better idea of what data science is. It, was, it has undoubtedly altered my perspective on the world. I'm much more curious about how things work and what I can do to explain them. And so because of this, data science to me is the ability to explore the world. It's an amazing feeling to know that after we leave here today, all of this will continue. And all of these experiences will be here for the next generations of students to come because the marathon continues. Thank you, everyone, and the graduating class of 2018 and 2019, and congratulations. And thank you, Kyle. So it's now my honor to introduce our commencement speaker, Kate Johnson, president of Microsoft US. Microsoft has been one of our closest partners literally from the very first days of data science at Berkeley. But that's building on a trust relationship that goes back more than 30 years. But especially today, as the company seeks to quote, to empower every person in every organization on the planet to achieve more, a mission we naturally embrace here at Berkeley. And beyond her role in the company, Kate personifies her own professional trajectory, crossing traditional boundaries that are so intrinsic to data science. Electrical engineering as an undergraduate, on to business at Wharton, and I learned today, she's here with you rather than going to her 25th anniversary of her graduating class. <clears throat> From there, she grew on to leadership roles um, throughout the classical software industry, Oracle, Red Hat, now at Microsoft, investment banking, and really going further to the role of information technology in absolutely everything uh, with her time at General Electric. With Microsoft's profound shift in mission, from putting a PC in every home to empowering people, she stepped into her current role, shaping the technology that underlies our connected age and how it comes into being. Along her remarkable path, Kate is a leader in transformation, which makes her particularly well-suited to address this path-breaking class. She's been a passionate advocate for diversity and inclusion, which is so core to our program. We're extremely great. We're extremely fortunate to have her. Please join me in welcoming Kate Johnson. Thank you, Dean Culler, Chancellor Chris, Dr. Carson, parents, siblings, friends, family members, and most importantly, the data science class of 2019. It's my distinct honor to address the first data science commencement in one of the nation's first data science major programs at the first university that took the risk of inviting me to speak. <laughs> last chance, Dean Culler, last chance. We're good to go? All right. Thank you for letting me share this special day with you, your families, and this extraordinary community. Speaking today, it feels like a really big responsibility, I have to say. I mean, I'm one of the few things that stands between you and tonight's series finale of Game of Thrones. <laughs> I know, I know where I stand. Someone asked me if I was nervous to speak to such a big crowd today, and I said, well, why would I be? It's not like it's the first day of Data 8. So no, I'm not nervous. But I gotta say, the more I learn about you guys, the more awestruck I become. All the work you did to create this brand new major, the skills you've gained, not just by studying data science, but by teaching it too. 
your ambitious appetite for academics. I learned that many of you are double or even triple majors. And of course, the Sway brothers, they're quadruple majors. If I tried to finish four majors, I would still be in college. <laughs> so many of you have already accomplished great things. I heard that one of you accidentally signed up for the wrong class and used the skills you learned there to write software for NASA that governments use for climate change. That should be Berkeley's new motto, even our mistakes make the world a better place. <laughs> and of course, the most impressive of all, some of you passed Professor Sahai's CS189 class, <laughs> right? Right? And for that, you deserve an extra round of applause. You know, data science technologies have advanced light years since I graduated college, but in many respects, we're still in the wild west of data ethics. The rules are still being written. And so the questions you've wrestled with here, they're not just the most important ones of our time, they're going to be important for a long time. Questions like, where is the line between surveillance and social good? Or how about, how do we design data sets that respect people of all backgrounds? Or, is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> In studying data science applications, some of you examined Chicago's traffic data. You built an algorithm to predict the most dangerous intersections. That's a potentially life-saving use of data. It also reminds me of some of the best advice I've ever received, and I think it's highly relevant for you here today. Look both ways before you cross the street. Now, this is something your parents likely taught you years ago, and yes, looking both ways is great advice, especially if you want to avoid being hit by a self-driving vehicle. But to me, it means so much more than that. It means you have a responsibility to look at a problem from all sides. And in a diverse world, one in which we all bring different backgrounds and beliefs to a common conversation, you have a responsibility to look at a person from all sides. We know that one of the best ways to mitigate bias is to create a sense of belonging. It's hard to do, but it really matters. And in the boardroom, I've been in meetings where it's painfully obvious when somebody or some type of person is talking too much. In the classroom, I know you've experienced the same. We won't name names, you know who you are. But what's less obvious is which person or which type of person is talking too little. Often, it's because they don't think their voices are welcome, so they stay quiet. They fade, and they start to feel invisible. If you're one of those people, I'm here to tell you that you're mistaken. You do belong. We want your input. We need your voice. I know it's not always easy, and I know you need help. So to the rest of us who could lend a hand, we have a choice to make. We can choose to notice, invite, and encourage the quiet ones to join the conversation. It's a choice that can yield great impact and one that I hope all of you will make. I wanna share a secret with you. The thing that keeps me up at night is not my responsibility to deliver billions of dollars of revenue to Microsoft, although I do think about that about a million times a day. <laughs> what plagues me at night is my responsibility to create a sense of belonging for every person in my organization. My responsibility to create a culture that can enable change by fostering inclusion in the face of inherent inequality. You see, I know our employees can solve just about any problem, no matter how hard or how complex, but only if we empower them, only if we see them, and more than that, only if they feel seen. And you've been trained well to do that here at Berkeley for sure, not just because of the diversity of your backgrounds, but because of the diversity of your strengths. Venetia Swamy is one of our AI engineers at Microsoft before she came to Seattle. 
She taught Data 8 as a Berkeley grad student. Vanitra said that when she sat in a CS class here, she'd look to her left, she'd see an economics major. She'd look to her right, and she'd see an English major. And she noticed how they viewed the same problem in different ways, through different eyes, different experiences, and different expectations. That's the start of empathy. That's the core ingredient of inclusion. And that's our duty in a diverse world. The tension of the digital era is that even as it brings us together in unprecedented ways, it's making it harder for us to connect as humans. We're tweeting and posting and gramming, myself included, but we're not really talking to each other. We're not really listening to each other. We're not really seeing each other. So before you offer an opinion, before you come to a conclusion, or heck, what about before you conclude a meeting? Do what you do before you cross the street and look. I mean really look both ways. Okay, second piece of advice. Looking both ways is great life advice, but when you think about it, it doesn't tell you the optimal time to cross the street or even the optimal speed. It simply reminds you to be aware of your surroundings. That's why you need to remember this. Chase awareness, not certainty. Who's to say that we know the difference between right and wrong? I mean, I know it's hard to believe, but these funny hats, they don't mean we have a monopoly on knowledge or morality. Ones and zeros are unambiguous. They are certain. The concept of right and wrong is simply not. The ethical questions you've thought about here are hard, one, are hard ones, for sure. Even the hot dog question. Especially the hot dog question. But you do have to be aware. Aware that data is intrinsically flawed. Just as the world it describes is flawed, just as the people who design it are flawed. And we must be aware that none of these facts absolve us of the harm caused if we abuse the power of data. At my company, we try to reinforce our awareness by testing our choices against a few timeless principles. We ask things like, is this fair? Is it inclusive? Is it safe and accountable? Does it respect privacy and provide security? Elie Wiesel survived the Holocaust and won a Nobel Peace Prize. He said that the opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. Well, indifference is also the opposite of awareness. Indifference is also the opposite of action. Indifference breaks down community instead of building it. When we're indifferent, we absolve ourselves of responsibility when it's needed most. Recently, I was with a large group of leaders discussing an important change we're driving in our business. Now, this is a group of amazingly accomplished, sought-after tech execs. But I gotta tell you, it was a really tough conversation. We just weren't getting the results that we needed. And I was getting super frustrated. Well, eventually, we figured it out. Basically, everybody in the room thought somebody else had the ball. They were counting on somebody else to rise to the occasion. Effectively, they were sitting it out. You see, indifference is the enemy of progress. It's the enemy of leadership. And it's most certainly the enemy of community. To make data the best that it can be, we must try to beat its bias. But you can't beat bias if you're a bystander. So how do you keep yourself aware about what's right and fair and just, especially after you leave this campus and the honest conversations it welcomes? I think one answer is in the school's leadership principles, which instruct you to be a student always. And to that I'd add this. Please, be a teacher always too, because you're the ones who've thought about these questions more than most people. You're not just graduates today. You're not just alumni. Now, you're the experts. Many of you have already experienced the joy of teaching by being TAs, mentors, advisors, and tutors. 
But to be a teacher, you don't have to stand in front of a lecture hall making announcements like Daddy De Niro. <laughs> you can simply speak up when you think others are sitting out. You can make a difference, especially if you see others are indifferent. So please, don't just go through the motions of designing algorithms. Keep your eyes open. Keep yourself open to talking about the inequities caused by the world's inequalities and bring that awareness to your newly earned authority. Because if you don't, who will? Okay, I won't be much longer. Pre-game for Game of Thrones is coming. So here's my third and final piece of advice for you on your graduation day. There's only one you, so ditch this notion of multiple personas. Back in the 90s, when I was just starting my career, and come to think of it, you were all in the womb, I thought there was a work Kate and a life Kate. And I wasn't alone. Most people in my era were coached to try and fit in to a standard professional mold. So I did. I was compliant. I mean, I wanted to fit in. But then, just as you're all about to find out, life happened. And managing two sets of me became overwhelming. So I did something rare and unique for my time. I brought the real me to work every day. All of me. Every bit of my Kateness. And I ditched the idea of a standard mold. I started sharing learnings from my life outside of work, inside of work. And that's when my career really began. Yeah, people were a little shocked at first, for sure, but they were also delighted and disarmed. They got insights from me that they never would have gotten otherwise. Here's a quick example. When I was in my early 20s, I really wanted my boyfriend to be able to read my mind. So badly. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome? Well, spoiler alert, he failed to meet my expectation. So instead, I learned how to share my thoughts with him more often and more clearly. He started doing the same. And as it turns out, great communication has been the foundation for our 30-year marriage. That experience, yeah, there he is. That experience changed me as a person, and I brought that new person to work. It helped me be more direct and transparent with my coworkers, my customers, and my partners. We stopped playing guessing games, we got a lot more efficient and a lot more satisfied with each other. Here's a more recent example. 18 months ago, I moved to Seattle away from my family on the East Coast. This means I've had to delegate the solemn duty of caring for my aging parents to my siblings. It hasn't been easy at all. But you know what I'm learning? My siblings are amazing. They're really good communicators, collaborators, and caregivers. And I love and respect them more now than I ever have. Well, that experience changed me as a person, too. So I brought that new person to work with me. And I learned just how powerful it can be to trust teammates with things I've never considered delegating before. My entire team is better off because of it. Those are just two ways that my life perspectives helped me inside of work. But it wouldn't have happened if I stayed locked in this notion that work Kate should somehow be different than life Kate. Believe me, all of us on this side are working hard to build a world that accepts every single one of you for who you are. Don't let us down by dressing up as the person you think we want you to be at work. We want you to be you. We need you to be you. Well, I said earlier that our understanding of how we use data is still being defined. Starting today, right now, it will be defined by you. Over the last few years, you've mastered the skills of writing and manipulating code. Now, we need you to write the code, the code of ethics, the code of behavior for designing and applying data science. We need you to be the models for how one should responsibly wield this great power in a world being eaten by software. 
you know, it, it probably won't be as clear cut as the Constitution or the Hippocratic Oath. And you might even have trouble fitting it in a word cloud. Instead, it will be written by your actions, by the example you set through the choices you make. And don't forget that every single day you'll make countless choices. Will you notice the quiet person in the room and invite that person to join the conversation? Will you think about how your algorithm impacts people of all backgrounds? Will you have the courage to show up to work as your authentic self and invite others to do the same? Every day, in a million ways, big and small, you will make important choices. Class of 2019, none of the problems we face today are really technology problems. They're human problems. It's up to you to make sure the conversations we're having about the responsible use of data advance the conversations of inclusion in real life, too. It's up to you to use the influence of your incredibly valuable degree to create cultures that enable change. That's how we make sure that in the age of artificial intelligence, machines won't be the only ones learning. Class of 2019, I hope you remember to look both ways, to chase awareness, not certainty. And remember, there's only one you. Congratulations, go Bears. Thank you, Kate. Uh, so my name is Michael Jordan, and uh, I don't like Michael Jordan jokes very much, but I'm sometimes called the Michael Jordan of data science, and I do like that one. <laughs> Good, just before we turn all the attention back to the graduates, uh, return attention back to my colleagues John and Ani for a moment and go slightly off script. I graduated in 1980. Um, and I was doing data science, so I did statistics and computer science and psychology. And when I came to Berkeley, it was 1998, and I was excited about this blend and started to teach it at the graduate level. And it was really popular, and it felt just like a moment in time had come. Um, little, little, little by little after that, went around campus and tried to find support for doing this at a broader level. There was a day about four years ago where I remember walking up to Ani Adhikari, and I'm intimidated by her, she's so impressive. And I said, there, you know, thinking about a freshman class, I have no idea how to do that, and it should be about, I started to say it, and 20 seconds later, she interrupted me and says, I'm in. Um, so a little bit later that same day, uh, I happened to cross paths with John De Niro, another person who I'm extremely impressed by. I started to give him the same pitch, and he said after 20 seconds, me too, I'm in. Um, so there was a team that formed here at Berkeley to do everything that you're seeing here. I want to also recognize David and Catherine, who've been the core members of this team from day one, uh, to make all of this happen. So I felt in that moment, perhaps like the Warriors did when they got Steph Curry, that's, that's on me, you know, brilliant in every possible way, and Kevin Durant, the tall guy in the back there. <laughs> all right, and uh, so I'm now in this moment thinking we have success, but what we need is the Draymond Green. So we're in the section called undergraduate awards, and every award after that's gonna be another team member on the Warriors. So the first one's gonna be Draymond Green, whose name is Adnan Hamani. Yeah! So, go ahead. So just to quote a note uh, of the letter that uh, Ani Adhikari wrote about him, um, I, I think you will see Draymond in him. He's made important contributions to the grading and content systems of Data 8. Those aspects of the course aren't fun, but they are crucial for its smooth operation. No one comes close to Adnan's combination of academic strength and dedication to the, uh, to the instructional program. So this year's citation is worded to Adnan Hamani. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I'm David Wagner from Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences, and I have the honor to present uh, the remaining undergraduate awards. 
So we'd like to recognize uh, the following students for their dedication and outstanding service. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Division of Data Science and also uh, the undergraduate student community. So as I call out your names for each of the award winners, I'd like to ask you to please stand when your name is read and stay standing until I've gone through all of the awards. And for the rest of you, please hold your applause. We'll recognize them at the end after we've gone through all the awards. Okay, our first two awards recognize graduating seniors who've made a difference in undergraduate education here in close partnership with their faculty through their tireless participation and integral leadership on student instructor teams. So these seniors have made absolutely essential contributions to education of their peers. For undergraduate, sorry, outstanding student instructor in teaching category, I'd like to recognize Sona Jaswani. Thank you, stay standing so we all have a chance to see you. For undergraduate, I'm sorry, outstanding student instructor in the infrastructure and content category, Andrew Z. Tan. Uh, our Catalyst Awards recognize seniors whose dedicated leadership in the Division of Data Science student programs and teams have inspired and energized their peers. So the 2019 Catalyst Awards go to Eleanor Fleming, Alexander Ivanov, Melissa Kim Lee, Subik Shimani, Great. We recognize outstanding service to the data science, UC Berkeley data science community by graduating seniors whose personal commitment, ethical bearing, and dedicated service has helped set community norms. So for service to the community, we recognize Shashak Chaganti, <laughs> Pratyusha Chirang, Chura, ah, Chura Gondola. <laughs> Hao Tsui. <laughs> Tim Lan Wong. <laughs> William Wong. Okay, our next to last category. Uh, data science is a discipline that moves from data to knowledge to action. And so with our Data Science in Action Awards, we're recognizing seniors whose expertise has enabled them to make a distinctive contribution to knowledge and action in the world. And those three recipients are Terry Tae Hyun Kim, Derek Topper, and Monica Wilkinson. And our last award, one time only, this year only, the Early Bird Gets the Worm Award <laughs> goes to our first declared data science major, <laughs> Farbad Nozad. Congratulations to all our award winners. So, the moment. Will all the graduates please rise? Please make your way to the ramp on stage left so that your names may be called. And as they go, let's give a round of applause to all our graduates. As they walk, a 
along with myself, our graduates' names will be read by Professor Jim Demmel, Chair of the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences, and Professor Sandrine Dudois, Chair Designate of the Department of Statistics. You'll count to 35. Okay, thank you. And then does Sundry know to count to 35? Okay. Do you want me to go? Are we ready? Oh, they're still going. Okay. All right, and we now commence with the reading of the names. Kyle Wynn. Adnan Hemani. Katya Williams. Win Sway. How Sway. Enrique Loco Lopez. Joanne Chen. Han Song. Emmanuel M. Lukban. Adam Osborne. Nikita Gupta. Sona Jaswani. Subiksha Mani. Akriti Singh. <laughs> Melissa Kim Lee. <laughs> Shalmik Shams Jamil. Nimalan Siva Palin. <laughs> Jessica Hu. <laughs> Jessica Cherney. <laughs> Andrew Omid Sorabi. Eric Javel. Tejus Baradwo. Neil Bagat. Anish Saha. Shashak Chaganti. Yash Sang Rajka. Yeah! 
Akshat Das. Zabin Bashar. Derek Topper. Jeevan Mokala. Niha Krita Jain. Tim Lan Wong. Monica Wilkinson. Bill Fu. Prathusha Charagondla. Nikhil Krishnan. Sophia Chang. Andrew Tungal. Jiajing Li. Lu Yun Lin. Shi Wen Wang. Shell Yu Jian. Jun Yan Tan. Dorothy Humeng Learn. Jia Hong Sha. Adonis Yi. Mulezi Dindradida. Shukriyadin Omed. Brian Wynn Trong. Yun Ni Choi. Louis Zhang. Terry Tae Hyun Kim. David Young, <laughs> Justin Cheng, yeah. Jun So Park, yeah. Jemima Shi, <laughs> Jun Nam Gung. Kyle Cho, Hiroaki Ashima, Winston O, oh. Bogun Choi, Terence Drinkwater. Gilbert Antonius, Henry Han Yu Liu, Daniel Zhuzhen Lin, William Mitchell Wang, Silam Jackie Wong. Jolina Yao, Di Zhang, Mark K. Hashimoto, Erica Minhin Pham, Eric Ung Yang. Claire Alana Dubin. Woo! 
Thank you. Garima Rahajia. Xinhua Zhou. Leo Yang. Ina Chirnomoritz. Crystal Chung. Lovepreet Singh Chaha. Dong Yoon Kim. CJ Jang. Matthew Brennan. Blake Fallon Williams. <laughs> Kayla Ray Simmons. <laughs> Eleanor Fleming. <laughs> Vasily Javaras. <laughs> Alexander Ivanov. UJ Shaw, <laughs> Farbad Nozad, <laughs> Efe Toros, <laughs> Ashley Nicole Purvis. Ryan Dana, Shi yeah. Chin Zhang, Si Yun Huang Fu, yeah. Ling Chi, Kevin Moroquin. Kush Sikand, Ming Chen, Blair Gao, John Ciano, Deep Mystery. Now, we are extremely honored to have with us today Chancellor Carol Christ, the 11th Chancellor of the University of California, Berkeley. May I invite Chancellor Christ to the podium? Thank you, Dean Culler, for the opportunity to address today's graduates. And thanks to you, Professor Carson and Professor Adhikari, for your wonderful leadership of data science education at Berkeley. Thank you also to Kate Johnson from Microsoft and to UC Berkeley Foundation trustee Kathy Kwan for joining us for this ceremony. To begin, I'd like to echo the many congratulations that we've heard today. Graduates, you are no doubt experiencing relief, elation, wonder, and apprehension at the prospect of finishing your degree. But in addition to all that, I hope you feel a sense of accomplishment. You've completed a demanding course of study at the nation's best public university. And I want to acknowledge the diligence, the perseverance, and the resilience that this takes. Beyond that, I want to congratulate and thank you for being bold, for taking a chance on a new academic program, for blazing a trail, and for helping shape data science at Berkeley, even as it has shaped you. This past fall, when it first became possible to declare an LNS major in data science, more than 1,100 students signed up in just a few weeks. 
clearly there was a lot of enthusiasm for the program. But you were the most excited of all. You structured your coursework so that you could be the first to graduate with the degree, and many of you also took an active role in planning out and refining data science classes, working with faculty to create modules, and investing your time and energy in building up this new community of scholarship. For that, we owe you a great deal. You are helping install at Berkeley an ambitious, discipline-spanning new program that I believe will help redefine what it means to be a research university in the digital age. Back in the 1880s, there was a very famous debate in England between two scholars, Matthew Arnold, a poet and educator, and Thomas Huxley, a biologist. At issue was whether college curriculums, which at the time focused largely on classical literature, should be expanded to teach the natural sciences. Arnold said no, arguing that the goal of education was to know the best which has been thought and said in the world. He conceded that an educated person ought to be familiar with the important results of scientific inquiry, such as Darwin's conclusion that, quote, our ancestor was a hairy quadruped furnished with a tail and pointed ears, probably arboreal in his habits, end quote. But how Darwin arrived at this conclusion, Arnold thought, was a concern only to the scientist. The biologist Thomas Huxley rejected this view, arguing that even for non-scientists, an understanding of science and scientific methodology was increasingly necessary as our society advanced and humans altered the natural world. Ultimately, Huxley's view ran, won out which is one of the reasons you've had science classes throughout your life and likely here at Berkeley. I bring up the Arnold Huxley debate because it illustrates the fact that what we teach our young people is not static and in fact must shift with the needs of the times. Today we acknowledge the growing digitization of lives and industries and recognize that a surge in the volume, variety, and availability of data means that an ability to navigate within this data-rich world is rapidly becoming a necessity for 21st century citizens, no matter their professional interests or academic pursuits. What follows from this is a need to treat data literacy as a central competency for liberal education and a recognition that we must weave computational thinking and data inference skills into the fabric of courses across the traditional disciplines. I've been so impressed with the model Berkeley has come up with to address this need, a model that invests students with the capacity to engage critically and responsibly with data, that gives them technical depth, that provides a look at the human and social implications of data, and that asks them to build up a specialization in disciplines ranging from neuroscience to sustainable development. This is an incredibly exciting new academic direction for Berkeley, and we owe much of it to those sitting right here in this room, both faculty and students. So thank you for helping us craft this new division, new coursework, and new major. Thank you for your foresight, for leading us down a new path, for your willingness to help sort out what is working and what isn't as we construct a crucial new academic offering on our campus. Graduates, thank you, and please accept my sincere congratulations. With the coursework you've completed here, I believe that you and those who follow you will have the skills, depth of knowledge, creativity, thoughtfulness, and ethical understanding to make you the leaders society needs in the new data age. Best of luck, and go Bears! Now will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Data Science please rise. By the authority vested in me by the Office of the President, I grant you the degree, Bachelor of Arts of Data Science, 
with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Graduates, you may now shift your tassel from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. On behalf of the faculty, I congratulate all of you.